And now it's time for the ridiculous. <laughs> what kinds of things make people piss? And how many suitors exactly has she dismissed? Siri, what Thank are some you. locations for a lover's tryst? Uh, oh, darling, surely there must be a list. A list. A list. A list. A list. A list. You're telling me it's all here on this bleeding this list. This preposterous and ludicrous. Well, actually, it's all quite ridiculous. 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 You. Welcome to The Ridiculous. I'm Sally Brooks. And I'm Jen O'Neill. We're back with more fun lists for you this week and a very special guest. Oh, I mean, I'm so excited about our guest. Uh, Not only is he an amazing comedian, a great friend, a radio host, which we will talk about in a minute. Uh, I mean, but also I learned the other night quite the art connoisseur. Oh, is that so? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> David, so it is David Perdue, and I will go. <laughs> it is our good friend, David Perdue. Welcome, hey, David. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I learned so David much about and I myself are doing it. We were on the sh- We were on a show together the other night, and I saw, and we were at this, um, this like, cafe, and there was some really, really mediocre art on the so walls. Bad. So bad. Like, somebody obviously, it was, like, Do you like feel almost like a joke. Do you the cafe? It was uh, San Francisco. San Francisco, Co- yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, coffee was, house. But yeah. I'm not going to say what location. <laughs> so we were okay. doing a don't tell show. <laughs> and I see David taking pictures <laughs> of this painting. And I was like, yeah. I cannot believe in my soul <laughs> that David thinks this is a good painting. I have to say something. <laughs> and I was like, what did. are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, you were like, you don't, what did you say? You don't think that's good, do you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what if you had been like, actually, it's my art? <laughs> yeah. I yeah, am yeah. so proud of myself and my art. Yeah, what if you were shop. like, this is my mom's artwork and I'm so proud of her? <laughs> yeah. Far uh, from it. But Far no, from you were like, but- uh, actually, I was sending it. My sister's a really good artist. I just wanted to show her, like, look, look at this shit that's up on the wall. Basically, <laughs> you, yeah. You're oh so much God, better than this. So yeah. funny. Like, and I was mainly showing her the price. I was like, somebody's going to pay $250 for this. Like, I never want to hear you complain about anything in your car fixed again. You could get that. Go get it. Like, <laughs> Right. Go get it. <laughs> go get that money. What a good brother. Yeah. Oh, I, I, love, say, I That love is a love friends. language that people don't talk about. Love language is sending people examples of worse art than you create <laughs> and right? telling you how successful they are right? True. you know like if somebody yeah. sent you a clip you. of a terrible comedian that's like got you know a hundred thousand followers on youtube or something if somebody yeah. sends that to you and they're like look at this shit you could do yeah, this shit you do like, thank you yeah, Thanks. that's kind of. I'm in a very aggressive <laughs> love language, I guess. A very aggressive. I like. Right. I used to like. I, if you notice some of the hoodies and stuff I wear, it's like weird paintings. Those are my sister's paintings. Yeah. That she didn't really? know. Yeah, she didn't know that I did. I just stole them and had someone put them on hoodies, and then she found out later, uh, which is probably not <laughs> ethical by any stretch of imagination. Uh, but I only did it to show her that like people liked it. <laughs> And now yeah, she's, yeah, got, so she's cool. gotten some work. She's gotten some work out of it. But I just told them put it on hoodies. So I have like yeah. four or five of them. Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, That's so nice of, my... of you. She said, like, I saw a picture of my stuff on your hoodie. I was like, Yeah, I took it. I took a picture. I got it printed <laughs> on there. And I know you didn't know, but now you ha- now people want it. So do it. She just she literally just made something for Ramon Revis like the other day. Cause I Really? Cause I yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so yeah. awesome! What a good brother! I tr- I, tr- I, I, did, I miss I can't I miss that in my intro. To to good brother. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I'm a good brother now. I'm just making up for being a terrible brother. When we, when I was oh. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm a very classic older trying... brother. Good. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so I want to talk about one thing. Uh, your new radio show that you're doing on WAB. WAB. Yes. I didn't yeah. even know the this. M- David. NPR station with Mark Kendall. Yes. Um, I didn't know either until my husband came home and was like, aren't you friends with the comedian David Perdue? And I was like, yes, I am friends with the comedian David <laughs> Perdue. And he was like, uh, well, did you know he has a radio show? And I was like, oh, I guess I'm not that good of friends with David Perdue. <laughs> I knew the other night and you let me go on and on about the Hawks. 
And you didn't tell me. <laughs> and you didn't tell me anything about your new gig. That's amazing. I love talking about the Hulk, so that's it. Got my attention. I was very excited about well, that conversation. Uh, <laughs> which, no, by the a- way, did you see that CeeLo Green is going to play the halftime show at the show, the game we're going to? I did see that. I did see mm-hmm. that. It's crazy. I, I didn't. CeeLo Green went to the my church as a kid. My, Did he, he? What? He went to yeah. He went to my church. My church it was like CeeLo Green. I think Dwight Howard went. I know. I know Dwight Howard went to my church. But CeeLo Green, I it was he was there before I was born. But my parents remember him because he was just a mm. bad kid. He <laughs> so, still run around. I mean, he's he kind like of he a bad, bad adult, kid. right? I, also I, that yeah, he kind of didn't. His yeah. wife <laughs> used to shop at Anthropology when I worked there. I remember I, that. I love. She was I, really cool. I love how Atlanta has these. Everybody's connected. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. connected, and I love it. So tell us more about your your radio show. Yeah, so it's called What's okay. Good Atlanta. Um, we're literally, we just take, like, news stories, and the, the goal is to try to find, like, a positive spin on different stories. So yeah, they're, they're maybe not necessarily always, like, none of them I don't think are bad stories, but just, like, like a positive spin on the news in a very, like, yeah. oh my I think God. we're still trying to find our footing. But, like, it's very, uh, I think the attempt is, like, a weekend update type deal. But I don't think mm. we do that. I think we just kind of a riff. And it's it's well, honestly you, so fun. You and Mark are the perfect people to do that. <laughs> yeah. Because no, you're both, right. like, super positive, likable people and very funny and, like, quick-witted. So I, that's so exciting. I can't wait to yeah, hear Mark it. Yeah, Mark makes me look real good. <laughs> Mark Mark makes me look. He's very talented. He does characters. He does way more than I'm doing on this show. I'm just kind of like watching him be a genius and then kind of being like, all right, I got a joke or two in there. And then they call it a right. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> You're both so geniuses. <laughs> yeah. Very much so. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, when is it on? When can we hear you? Sorry. We release you episodes off. Friday. I don't know if there's a okay. time, but Friday, because I believe it's a podcast. That they maybe turn into uh, something on the radio. So it's cool. through WABE. Yeah. So it's very exciting. I love that you have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> and you're like, I think story. it's a podcast. <laughs> oh, my life. <laughs> yeah. I'm very consistent. And this is what we need. We need to be less bothered about <laughs> things we're involved in. And then everything will just come for us, right? <laughs> totally. I know. Uh-huh. The other day you were like, oh, I'm doing this thing tonight about some like big ideas. <laughs> Oh yeah! What was that thing you were doing? It was you called s- the you night like of ideas. Quite sure. It oh, that's what the, it is. Okay. The night of ideas, and it was put on by like the French consulate, like something oh, with wow. the French consulate. And then there were these. It was at the Atlanta History Center, and I, I did it already. I still don't know what I did. I just said <laughs> oh, yes. God. I love it. <laughs> I, had, I had to moderate a panel about environmental stuff. I was like, oh sure, okay, sure. I don't know. <laughs> I just don't say no. That's that's a gift and a curse. I don't say no a lot. Um, I mean, you do a lot of interesting things. He did teach a class. He taught a course at Emory on comedy. I'm back at Emory this week. I'm back. I'm back on campus this week. I'm. Are you? Where they were like, "You're so great. We're gonna have you back for round two. I don't. Well, I'm. I'm lecture. There's a course called. I think it's uh, religion. What is it? It's religion, law, and And comedy, and art. So they they have different artists. Okay. And they asked for me to come and, and like do like the comedy part, and I was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest. I, the guy I'm talking, he's he's a full on. He's a real lawyer. He's a real deal lawyer, and he's been talking <laughs> to me. And I'm like, but <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I was like, this is, well, yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. I only have my own weird comedy perspective, but I surely I will talk to your class about what yeah. I think any of this means and how you know they all connect. <laughs> but yeah, I love it. I too. love, I love it. it. Time. Yeah, I went. I was uh, invited to come back to my uh, last year to go back to my college to be like a, I was like an executive in residence, but they Ooh. brought me back because of like comedy and you know whatever writing and podcasting, and so they had never had anybody who was like it was all usually it's like executives who are like engineers, mm. <laughs> like mm. they didn't have had anybody in the arts before, and this one woman asked me to come, so I was like guest lecturing in a, in a ton of classes. And mostly they were like, you know, somewhat creative related and they knew what they were getting into. This one woman 
who was an attorney, which I also went to law school, but like, I do not think of myself as an attorney anymore, but I went to, I went to her class and I walk in and she's like, uh, yeah. Do you have slides prepared? And I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Like, like a PowerPoint. No. Yes. Oh my God. I was like, no, I just thought we were going to like chat. <laughs> yeah. That's the same thing. They were like, do you want some PowerPoints for tomorrow or for Wednesday? And I was like, why would I do that? Like, why would why? I do that? No. I mean, we're going to we're gonna talk. Yeah. I mean, over any questions. <laughs> this is a Q&A. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was very, like, she looked at me like, you don't have a PowerPoint? And I was like, what is I supposed to have a PowerPoint? Yeah. <laughs> no, we're no, comedians. Also, no one likes we don't PowerPoints. have PowerPoints. No one yes, likes those. I was like, you're... Yeah. Your students don't want a Unless PowerPoint. You're, like, no. <laughs> Dimitri Martin or something. Yeah. Right. Have, yeah. Like, also, let's be real. No that's props. work. That's more work. Yeah. That's why exactly. I do what I do because I don't want to work like that. So, yeah. Right. No, not. <laughs> yeah. Stand up comedy is definitely like the laziest job we could possibly have. Right? Easily. Because it's like we don't even have to like load in, load out. We don't have to carry any <laughs> equipment with us. Just show we up. We just walk in and then we leave. <laughs> I love when people you have a show and they're like, "Oh, you have to be here at six thirty for the sound check," and you're like, "Okay, Are you kidding? <laughs> hello, me? hello, yeah. what? Yeah, I know. Okay, bye. I know. Like, doubt it. <laughs> doubt it. Yeah. You can um, just say hello for me. Like, do you have right? a person there? How I about say hello? You. I believe say you can say a couple hello. hours. Go for it. Yeah. I trust you. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Hey. Well, let's get to our lists. Okay. Yes. Cool. this week um so david this one is it's so fun. did you ever find that now that after schitt's creek nobody can say your name without sounding like alexis from schitt's creek oh no i don't know oh, okay don't... you haven't seen it okay because she's always no. like, david david <laughs> david and now I... like i can't say your name without thinking i sound like that uh, like, no david that is david. on my need to watch list but i'm so <laughs> I'm so, I mean, I've had years of being weirded out by people saying my name that like nothing can phase me. Okay. You know, just like having the same name as a senator. There's no, I, everything right, right. could be weird. Yeah, everything could be weird. I don't, yeah. Like the same name as like the whitest, most conservative senator. Like, oh my God. Not, yeah. Right. <laughs> like it's, yeah. it's, it is, I'm sure, shocking to a lot of people when they meet you. <laughs> at what point in your career, David, um, yes. at what point in your career did you, how, did you finally give up the need to say like not that David Purdue? It's first because of all, I've been friends my... with you for almost ten years, and I've yeah. seen it. And like so, like I can't remember when you stopped saying that. Uh, I mean, it's technically it's it's still in my bio, which I need to take Is out. Would that I do if I do anything local? I do that. I put it send that bio out mainly because I remember I had a friend who had me do a fundraiser. And my no. name was on it. And she said she was getting calls of people saying, we're out. We don't want to give you any money if you have this guy. <laughs> and so I had to start putting it in fundraisers because people were like, yeah, definitely not. We don't want to help these kids anymore. It's like, what? Yeah. Yeah. These kids want to have a better future. Well, not if that guy's there. So they, I had to yeah. start putting in my yeah. Bible. Yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure you did a couple of our like laughs Trump hate uh, yeah. charity shows we used to do. And yeah, we definitely need to be like, not that David Purdue. <laughs> yeah, it was very important. <laughs> the good people, one. It the was very one. important people knew that. Also, I would get like the random yeah. DMs, which was like. Oh, yeah, bad. Like, yeah, bad. I was like, oh my God, people have no idea. So Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you guys know the comedian uh, Tom Takar. Yeah. Yeah. Whose name was, Ruff. is Tom Brady. Right. Like his name is, his legal name is Tom Brady. I had and no he, idea. Yeah, and he's when he started comedy, probably to like. I mean, it was when we lived lived in New York, so like maybe five or six years in, he finally changed. He was like starting to get some traction. He was like, "I need to do it now before yeah. I yeah before I get bigger." Because you know, it was like I mean, it was always like, and he's from Indiana. It's a big football state, so he was like, I mean, it was always like a topic of conversation. He was like, "I think yeah. I just need to change my last name." So now he goes by Tom Takar, which That's was so I think funny. his dad's no last name. Yeah, okay. we need a support. Oh. We really right? do with names of people. <laughs> I met a dude for the W when I was at WAB. I met a Michael Michael Jordan. Yeah, oh, really? Who, yeah, he. I forgot what he. He's. A, I think he worked for the AJC well, or something. 
And we Michael had B. Thing Jordan, about, the actor. He, yeah. Yeah, he should come to our meeting too. Yeah. He should lead it. <laughs> yeah. Be like you guys and like Hitler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, John Hitler. Should, and- <laughs> yeah, John Hitler. Of course. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Just, just meeting totally. over coffee and donuts and talking about our, our struggles. Yeah. Right. We need a meeting for sure. I love that. Um, so yeah. in honor, so David hosts um, a sports podcast called Fourth and Ten. Um, and I, I love that whenever I talk to you about it, you're always like, it's kind of like anything but sports, really. <laughs> it is that's sports, my goal. though. It is a sports. Yes. Yeah, that's your goal. Yes. But um, I thought I would bring a list that was um, uh, by netluxury.com. And this listicle was compiled by Devjot Bath. And it is 12 funny moments in sports that are unforgettable. Ooh. So these are like the, 20, right. the 12 funniest moments in sports. And um, I didn't know of any of these. I'll be honest with you. Okay. Um, what shocked? <laughs> I know. <laughs> when we talked about the Hawks know. basketball. Well, <laughs> now I'm a, I'm a very new Hawks fan, and I'm still learning. But a lot of yeah. this I had no idea. Um, so I'm wa- I'm wondering if you um, if you uh, remember any of these moments. Uh, probably oh, okay. this first one. This one's funny. Is um, uh, Kobe Bryant ignores Chris Rock. Do you remember this moment? This was in the yeah. 2010 NBA Championship Finals. Okay. I do um, remember it. Kobe Bryant. on the bench. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So yeah. Kobe Bryant led the LA Lakers to victory against the Baltimore Celtics. Um, during one of the final games, a funny moment happened when Bryant ignored comedian Chris Rock after taking a seat on the bench. Um, Rock and comedian David Spade scored front row seats next to the Lakers bench. Rock pulled out his A material, trying to make Bryant laugh when sitting beside him. But Bryant remained uh, in the zone and didn't even crack a smile. Uh, Rock trying to make Bryant laugh is one of the funniest sports highlights. Have you? <laughs> so not only do I remember that, I the more you learn about Kobe since his past, the more you realize nothing yeah. faced them. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like a lot of athletes have like pregame music to like hype them up and like get them focused. I found out like yeah. Kobe's pregame music was like the theme music to like Halloween that like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, he's not budging at all. Like this dude, he's locked in. Like Chris Rock can't, he can't do anything with that. If somebody's I love pregame that. music is hollow, the Halloween song. That's yeah. Right. He's a different, Chris he's Rock a different was breed. just like That's a fly hilarious. buzzing. Yeah. Yeah, I did remember watching a video and like looking how hard he was working to do something, and like Kobe not even acknowledging him. Chris Rock just going on and on, and I'm like, I know a bomb when I see one. That's a bomb, <laughs> right? That's a bomb. <laughs> Like, you gotta get off stage he was like, I gotta it. keep going. It's like yeah. the, the comedians that like, you know, it's like they have a three minute set, but they don't get a laugh. So they just keep yeah. going and going and yeah, trying to get yeah. a laugh. It's like, no, just cut your losses, man. Hey, get off live stage. To, live to do it another day. <laughs> yeah. switch, switch seats with David Spade. Yeah. <laughs> just Let him give him a shot. Yeah. Right? So funny. <laughs> yeah, the picture is pretty hilarious because it's like Kobe Bryant's just sitting there stone face and Chris Rock has that big like Chris Rock grin like yeah. right behind him. Like, <laughs> this will get him. <laughs> Not even close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, number two is the fan man interrupts fight. I guess this was um on November 6, 1993, Evander Holyfield and yep. Riddick Bow yep. were battling over the WBA and IBF. I don't know what any of this is championships. <laughs> I love the highly though. anticipated fight. <laughs> And then during the seventh ma- round, fan man James Miller crashed into the ring, resulting in one of the funniest and most chaotic moments. I guess his stunt started with him paragliding for 10 yep. minutes inside Caesar's Palace yeah. in wow. Las Vegas. And then his equipment tangled in the lights and he descended to the ring. <laughs> oh my God. So you remember that? I've seen the video of it and I, I feel like they just like... He didn't land in the ring, but he landed close enough. I think people just like beat him up. <laughs> it looks like it. it the picture he just, just like, shows jumped him. people. Yeah. Yeah. He oh had my the big God. fan on the back with the yeah. Bold yeah, move. Yeah, the paraglide. I don't so know what funny. the response he thought was gonna happen, but that's a bold move. That's really know, where he started from. If he Good was question. paragliding, he was inside Caesar's Palace. I feel like yeah, that like had to, to be like, like an and jump, stunt, right? Right? From yeah. somewhere. Well, I don't know. I don't know if he. I'm also just imagining them with like you know those like big sticks like at um 
at like clothing stores is that people yeah, use to get, get things off the yeah. top. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm imagining them trying to get him down with. <laughs> this I, is I just... in 93. So I feel yeah. like back then security wasn't like as tight as it is now. You yep, know what I mean? Not. I th- feel like he probably like in 93, they probably weren't thinking in terms of like, what are we going to do to prevent paragliders? Somebody from the sky, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now they probably have like five or six content creators. Yeah. Yeah. Up there. (laughs) Totally. Lined up. Uh Um, Number three, a boy's marriage proposal to Emma Radu Kanu. Radu Kanu? Radu? You guys know her? Tennis player? (laughs) Uh, Oh, this this is fairly recent. Yeah. It it was like a a small child? Yeah. Seven-year-old Leo Frankie couldn't let his crush slip away without a marriage proposal. So um, Mm -hmm. as Royal Albert Hall came to a hush, Frankie asked uh, Radu Canu to marry him. Uh, The adorable moment got a huge laugh from everyone in attendance, including Radu Canu. I I hope I'm saying this right. I (laughs) I, I mean, listen, if if that's wrong, she should consider changing it because that sounds very fun. Yeah. Radu Canu. Watched my ex boyfriend's tennis games for like a year, and every time I was like, "You were great," and he was like, "We lost." <laughs> I was like, it looked great. Yeah, like, I had no idea what was going on. You cared about the important things. It was like how it looked. It looked yeah, great. you were. You did it. I know. Yeah. Um, this you one did says, it. <laughs> Number fall <laughs> ball rolls between Bill Buckner's legs. Um, in 1986, uh, Boston Red Sox uh, fans hoped their beloved team could break the famous curse of the Bambino. Unfortunately, the curse reared its ugly head, resulting in the funniest moment in ba- Major League Baseball that year. Well, funny to everyone but Red Sox fans and first baseman Bill Buckner. Um, it, do you remember that? I know that that is a very okay. – because it's not funny. It's, it's sad. Like they – the city turned on – it was like a, the curse. Like they're like, you're yeah. cursed. You know, it says then, they hated Boston fans hated him for years until the Sox broke the curse in yeah, 20, and then they welcomed him back like it's all good. It's like no, you put me through hell for like twenty years. <laughs> like you, you don't get to love me now. I did watch that <laughs> David Beckham and David and Victoria Beckham documentary, and that's kind of what they did to David Beckham. They like mm. hated him and cursed him and like like wished him dead, and yeah. then and then like as soon as he came, you know. But I was so impressed by his like. He's very his, calm. Like tenacity, yeah. Yeah, so he's calm. very like very calm. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Okay. Um, number five, squirrel scores touchdown. A squirrel stole the show during a non-conference game between Kent State and Louisville on September twenty third, two thousand seventeen. During the second quarter, the squirrel appeared on the fifty five yard line. With both teams in a huddle, the squirrel broke away and ran for the end zone like it was playing in the Super Bowl. Uh, that was so, that'd be so cute. I, like I, I, I love the puppy bowl. I would be in that. Bowl is the best. The, the premier bowl, in my opinion. <laughs> Yeah. Bowl. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Number six, Steve Lyons pulls down his pants. I guess. Um, Steve Psycho Lyons. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it says his nickname was Psycho. Yeah. And on July 16, ninety ninety, he slid off first base. Uh, slid first base off of a into first base off of a bunt, and then he got dirty. So he tried to clean it off, and then he didn't realize what he was doing, and he pulled his pants down in front of millions of people watching at home. Yeah. So I remember that video because uh, he like was trying to like you know you get, I play baseball so you just like try to dust it off and it, mm-hmm. you know, yeah if you're in the locker room yeah because something gets in your pants and he was doing that and you could tell he just totally forgot where he was yeah as soon as he pulled it he was like oh god like there are cameras everywhere <laughs> I wouldn't know why he was sliding into first base like that's not a thing you should ever do no it's you run t- through first base typically frowned upon you know and and that's why he's Steve Psycho lines he's doing stuff he shouldn't have been doing. <laughs> But I mean, I guess he was safe, right? Now. He was safe. Yeah. And he also got nicknamed the Moon Man after that. Oh, because, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one says, uh, number seven is Phoenix Sun Gorilla mascot saves the day. Uh, in 2017, the Phoenix Suns took on the Washington Wizards in a game when an incident occurred near the end of the fourth quarter from out of nowhere. Uh, the Phoenix Sun Gorilla mascot slid onto the court to grab a drumstick that a fan had thrown onto the court during the game. The funny moment caught everyone off guard, but it turned out the mascot was the game's hero, saving the players from tripping on a piece of the chicken. 
Um, that's so I rude. Mean, I feel like cool. they, I mean, maybe they overhyped the that. Like, it's not like he like stopped a bullet or anything. Yeah, <laughs> it's I like know. he maybe saved someone from tripping over. A, <laughs> we recently, a ta- we recently talked about the gorilla on Fourth and Ten, and because we oh, were really? talking about like what, which mascots make the most money, and that that dude makes like, I think it's like ha- half a million dollars a year, and Damon was furious. <laughs> He's Why? So, he just he's just like he's like you should be paying teachers like all these other like he even thought all the other people that the money should go to. Yeah. And he was so upset that this guy Yeah, but like, you can't be upset about a mask like you can't be upset about somebody who is money, working but you for you are a, in like a just a hot suit. Right. Well, and you're yeah. like working around in the same game as people who are making millions of dollars a game. Like true. you can't you can't fault this guy for making $500,000. It, it I We're mean, here. all every yeah. single one of the like the cheerleaders should be making that much. Like at the very least, they should be making at least. The cheerleaders on don't par. make shit. They don't, don't make anyone. shit. Yeah. 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 It's I all like they don't make anything. A, they make the least. Yeah, I have a friend who was a Lakers cheerleader, and yeah, they don't. Yeah. They oh don't really? Make, yeah, yeah. I would think a Lakers cheerleader would make something, but the Hawks cheerleaders. My friend's sister was a Hawks cheerleader, and she didn't make anything and yeah. it's like yeah. 50 dollars a game like or something they're like get out of here you old lady <laughs> yeah yeah it's something crazy they run them out yeah. yeah yeah but i do like how now there's uh male there's a lot of like male cheerleaders and there's a lot of different body types oh for um, sure for I, sure yeah i think i like that's one thing that i'm very much enjoying about the atlanta hawks Okay. <laughs> the, the Hawks have male children. Yeah. Jen's oh, cool. new love. Yeah. Atlanta it's Hawks. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Yes. Love it. It's so fun. Number eight, Rodney McRae runs through the outfield fence. On May 27th, 1991, M- McRae ran to hit to catch a hit in the outfield of the present day Providence Park in Portland. Um, McRae caught the ball, but then crashed through the outfield fence. The hilarious blooper, blooper remains one of the funniest moments in baseball and is played each year at the Baseball Hall of Fame. Oh, um, poor guy. Yeah. <laughs> but it I, says that he, it keeps his name in the spotlight, so that's good. Sure. <laughs> I would, I've I mean, seen it. It's like a very, it's almost like a plywood outfield. It's very thin, and like he hits the bottom, and then the top kind of comes over, and he just runs through it. Oh, it's oh, not, I've seen that one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah where it looks like it's like a trick thing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I would want to. Be, I would not want to be. In, I'm like, take me out the Hall of Fame. I don't want to. Do right. That. I just. I'm over here. I'm trying to be a realtor now. Yeah. I don't need my dad <laughs> yeah, yeah, out there. Right? I, I, Whatever. I, I, if he were a realtor, that would be like on his billboard, and he would like it would be on. Park benches yeah. with his face, he would milk it. <laughs> oh, I remember, yeah. I, for sure. yeah, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I, I were, I used to work for this nonprofit, and one of our fundraisers every year is that we would have all of these like celebrities, like our old like, um, uh, like football, baseball players, because it was in Chicago, so it was like a ton of there were a ton of like Bears players and mm. Cubs players that would come and they would do like autograph signings and people would you know pay to get in uh-huh. and then all of it went to charity. But every single one of the retired football, baseball, they were all realtors. Every single one of them oh, had their yeah. realtor business card, and then they would have like all their whatever championship rings. Um, they were How really nice about me? letting us. It's so smart. Try them on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're very nice. <laughs> Do you remember when we went to Cincinnati and like the only thing I knew about Cincinnati was Boomer Esiason because he came to- <laughs> Boomer. <laughs> because he like he went to my elementary school on Long Island and he like came and visited our and oh, wow. so that's the only football player I ever like remembered or knew and like made an a- impact on me. Mm-hmm. So like every time I saw a Bengals thing, which is everywhere in Cincinnati, yeah. I was like, oh Boomer. Boomer, yeah. like, you got like everybody was like Jen. That was like thirty years ago. Oh, there have been so many players since then. But anyway. to be fair, he's probably still the best known player. Yeah, oh, is he cool? For, I mean, for Cincinnati, Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's yeah. you know Joe Burrow catching up, but he's he's still not Boomer. No, he's not he's Boomer. Not, I mean, he doesn't have a cool name. Boomer. He doesn't have a cool name. He was so cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, this one is probably my favorite in the whole list. Number nine, Sam Maxwell knocks out an overconfident fighter. 
I didn't see this happen, but this story makes me laugh. Uh, French boxer Sabri Sadiri learned an important lesson the hard way back in 2019. Uh, brag once the fight's over and not a second before. Um, Sidiri dominated his boxing match against Sam Maxwell for all 10 rounds, delivering savage punches to his opponent's head and body with only 15 seconds. Uh, with only 15 seconds left, Sidiri was confident he'd win, so he decided to mock Maxwell by dropping his hands. And Maxwell took advantage and knocked out Sidiri in Jeez. his most embarrassing loss. Oh, I mean, yeah, well deserved. I love well that. Deserved. Totally yeah. well deserved. I would love to have seen that. Oh, I love it. And then um, number ten, Don Mattingly eats fans' popcorn. Um, oh, those I are guess my he favorites. was. Yeah. All of um, any time of those are always my favorites. When like yeah? a ball goes in, yeah. When a ball goes in, and then like it happens in basketball. They steal a hot happens, dog, and they're just like, "Give me a bite," and you're just like, "What?" Or yeah. give me a sip. It's my. <laughs> It's like, oh, it's like they're people too. They're hungry. Right? Yeah. They want snacks. <laughs> they're hungry. Yeah. They're funny. They're, yeah. Yeah. They get it. Yeah. <laughs> the fans, yeah. The fan, and the fan's going to like dine out on that story oh, for the forever. rest of their life. Like yeah. what a thrill if you like, you know, someone got, get a, you know, came up into the stands like a basketball player. If you were at the Hawks game, Jen, yeah. Yeah. a basketball player like flew like, into the stands <laughs> And then sipped your wine, you'd be like, Yeah, this is- even if the mascot just like pats my head with this big dumb glove, I get excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be stoked if they ate my popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, 11, number 11 is Jim Marshall runs the wrong way. Uh, Minnesota Vikings, Jim Marshall had a decorated career setting several records. Unfortunately for Marshall, he's best remembered for one of the NFL's funniest moments. On October 25th, 1964, Marshall acted quickly when he recovered a fumble from the San Francisco 49ers. Marshall snatched up the ball and sprinted 66 yards towards the end zone. Well, it turns out he ran in the wrong direction into his own end zone oh and he scored for the other oh. team yes mm. but it says luckily the vikings pulled out the victory in the end thank god i mean oh, i yeah. can really relate to that because okay. the one year that i played basketball it was like you know it was boys and girls and then they would like line us up and they'd be like this is who you're guarding and it was always like i guarded the other girl and um the only time i scored is i scored on the wrong <laughs> basket because they because would like switch it, sides uh, yeah and i was I gonna say know. i was I'm gonna so say you, you score because you were open oh you ding dong yeah but yeah and then, <laughs> finally number 12 this is the last one a fastball kills dove uh, oh the, uh, yeah I mean, it says i've seen that i've watched that one over funny. and over yeah. now yes in 2011 the Mariners met the San Francisco Giants as pitcher Randy Johnson prepared for his pitch. A dove flew into his pitching zone. Nobody saw the dove until its feathers exploded, it exploded. after the ball made contact. Rest in yeah. peace, poor. He threw so hard too. He's like six. Randy Johnson was like six ten, threw a hundred miles an hour, and that thing just. I remember it. It was like all over the news. Exploded. It just exploded. Oh, yeah, it's like when Fabio got hit in the face with a pigeon. Oh yeah, when he was on a yeah, roller coaster. Roller coaster, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. My Watch favorite thing about Randy Johnson now is like he's like apparently like an excellent photographer. Like, oh, really? He got like very <laughs> photography. Yeah. So it's like this huge on the sidelines with like these nice lenses just taking all these pictures. And it's like <sighs> you made so much money, and yet you're like still still chasing it, still chasing that thing, whatever. Right, it is. that's all awesome. that. It's like we all want to yeah. find our creative outlet, you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's for like him. Very Baseball good too. is for the fans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is he awesome. very good or is he Randy Johnson? You know what I mean? I, I heard he was very, <laughs> I heard he was very good at it, actually. Uh-huh. I mean, imagine is the angles like, that you get being 16. You're getting angles everybody true. can't get. You know? That's true. Yeah. I mean, is it like uh, you know, George George W. Bush? Oh, oh he's good good at painting. <laughs> yeah. Right? No, yeah. he's like, oh, <laughs> is he? Well, yeah. I mean, he, he paints, paints so like dogs. Hitler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. He paints puppy dogs. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. W paints puppies and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, he, good on him. I guess I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you should so call funny. him up and be like, you could get like two hundred fifty dollars for this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know a coffee shop willing yeah. to take in your art. W, they'll you take anybody. 
True. Hey, man, Bill Clinton <laughs> plays the saxophone, you know? That's true. They've all got a little bit of an artist in them. Yeah. We all I know he didn't play this. I don't remember him playing the saxophone one time after getting elected. He did it. Like, <laughs> right? It was all cool. It's like he went on like, Arsenio stop. and then. What is it? Just yeah, yeah. They're like, you got to do this, Bill. You got to do it. He only learned yeah, one yeah. song and he was like, yeah, I don't I actually don't know how to play anything. I just learned for that <laughs> one moment in time. 30 seconds of one song. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and just to get elected, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it works. Hilarious. Kudos yeah. to him if that's yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hillary was practicing the flute because she was like, "This is gonna work for me too." <laughs> that's what happened. She did bring out yeah. the instrument. <laughs> she did bring out the instrument. I mean, that yeah. it was that. It was yeah. either that or you know patriarchy. Either one. She, one of those. She two. brought yeah. out the hot sauce when she should have brought out the flute or the clarinet or something. That's exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, I love that list, Jen. I mean, you're just becoming list. such a sports fan. Um, I know. I love look this. at me go. And I appreciate you tailoring <laughs> it to our guest. Um, I did did not do that. That's I did okay. not. Love it. Um, I knew you unless, wouldn't, and that's why I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just kidding, you're on top of this. <laughs> let me okay. say. Well, maybe. Okay, David. Let me ask you this. Okay. Do you talk in your sleep? Uh. <laughs> Yes, I've <gasps> I've been known to talk in my sleep. Do you, is there anything that people have reported that you've said that's uh, particularly awesome or embarrassing? No, or are you like I'm, a mumbler? I'm, yeah, I've always heard that it sounds like I'm I'm whatever I'm saying. It's important, but it's also yeah. not like like the way I've, I've heard the way I say it is like whatever's happening up there. He means business. It is urgent, <laughs> um, but uh-huh. I don't know. No one knows what it is. So yeah. that's been, yeah. That's like my my son is very much like that. Like he, well, A, does not believe us when we're like, because he will sit straight up, look at you and be like, be like, oh. some bang or just some, 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 some. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. And you're like, oh, really? Okay, lay back down. And he's like, what was it? You know, yeah. he's he's yeah. having some kind of like real sassy argument in his Very sleep. intense. Most nights. Yeah, very intense, but not Love intelligible it. at all. Okay. Um, so, okay. So I have a list. It is from someecards.com and it is 27 people share the funniest thing their partner has done in their sleep. Um, and I'll just share a couple of these and it was compiled by Mae Wilkerson. Do you know her? I actually know her. She's like, do? yeah, it's kind of funny. I was like, I was that like, does sound familiar. I was thinking like, cause she, like a lot of comedians, when I lived in New York, a lot of people freelance for some e-cards mm-hmm. and, um, and I actually, yeah, I know her. She, I think she's in LA now. She's like a writer in LA. But anyway, uh, apparently she's still working cool. for some e cards because this came Love out it. in 2023. All right. Oh, nice. Um, okay. So here, here's what my girl woke up one night and said, Did you find your rocks? And I asked her what she was talking about. And she said, I don't know. I'm just trying to make conversation and then promptly went back to sleep. She has no <laughs> recollection of this. <laughs> These are scary. <laughs> I have a feeling that these are going to be scary. I love that because I'm like, it's like, not only is she like making no sense, but then she's also like gaslighting you and to be like, I don't know. What are you (laughs) I'm just trying to make conversation with you? Jesus. (laughs) That's wild. Right? Oh, Oh, no. God. One of my friends had a girlfriend or still has a girlfriend there, like engaged, um, who sleeps with like her eyes partially open. Oh, I've been known oh. to do that. <gasps> oh Jen. no! Yeah. No, are you people possessed? People tell me, and it, like I don't know if I do it anymore, but I definitely did it like in high school at sleepovers, and I would always wake up to people right in my face laughing, and then I would like, <laughs> oh, yeah, because no. I would just like try so hard to stay awake, you know, and like be a part of what's happening, and then yeah. I would like fall asleep, but my eyes would still feel a little just to, open, just, just not yeah. to miss whatever's gonna happen. Yeah, nothing, nothing more fun at a party than a girl who's like half asleep uh, trying to yeah. stay awake <laughs> oh, i hate that's the thing i hated about like middle school slumber parties and stuff is like bitch let me sleep if i'm tired let yeah. me go to bed but people torture yeah. you and you they won't let forever. you what <sighs> what are we that. doing yeah exactly do my friends used to call it they would be like oh you're gonna pull a sally which is where like i'd be at a sleepover or a party and i'd be like hey i'm gonna go to the bathroom and then i would just sneak off and go to sleep smart yeah <laughs> smart it's like i would do like an inside irish goodbye like i did it just yes. like in my own house or somebody else's house i would just go find a couch and be like yeah and i wouldn't tell anybody i was doing it 
because I didn't want anybody to stop me. Right. Because they'll try to stop you. And it's like, my, I'm not asking, my body's telling me to do this. Yeah. (laughs) I know. Let me listen. Yeah. (laughs) I'm not that fun. (laughs) I'm not that fun. You don't need me to. You don't yeah. need me uh, to stay up. Okay. We were freshly married and living overseas. My husband hadn't had much sleep the nights before, which usually enhances any sleep talking. It was hot in our room. My husband mumbled something, which I didn't quite catch. I asked him to repeat it. He got up, opened the bedroom window, and said very pointedly, airflow, bitch, and then laid <laughs> no. back down completely asleep. Now, my husband has never, not once, ever called me a name or even raised his voice to me, so this is particularly hilarious. That is so funny. Yo. She's got to ask who... Who who did who did he think the bitch was like who right because if he's never did that to her then like in his mind in that dream <laughs> who is this person that he's up, clearly upset with and I just love that like people in their dreams are just so much more like snappy and clever like to be oh, like yeah. airflow bitch yeah <laughs> it is so great yeah it's like a so mic drop great. moment <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, my wife started screaming one night that she was lost at the local grocery store and that no matter where she went, she couldn't find her way out. I asked her, has she tried checking out at the cash registers? She looked at me and in her most sincere voice said, that's why you're the smartest person I know. And she <laughs> rolled back over and fell asleep. Aww, which is sweet. very Polite. sweet. Yeah. That's sweet. That's a very compassionate <laughs> partner who's just like, I see you going through something. Let's work through it together. Right? And <laughs> like but in their sleep, actually. Yeah, I yeah. like that. I think they're going to make it. They're going to make it. Um, <laughs> okay, my boyfriend woke me up the other day by gently putting his fingers in my mouth. And I kept moving my head out of the way until eventually I was like, can you stop what that? What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He sounded oh genuinely upset and asked why I woke him up as he was having a really nice dream about feeding a deer. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! Oh my God, that's hilarious! I love that I, for him. I love it he's for him. He's on a prairie also... somewhere in his <laughs> just... dreams. Oh, he's like he's like feeding Bambi. He's got like yeah. birds on his. You know, he's Snow White. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let that you gotta let that prince sleep. You gotta let him let him have that moment. Yeah, that's his happy place. You feed the deer. That's a happy place. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Uh, My grandfather was a hard sleep talker. My grandmother had a funny story. One day my grandfather was sleeping saying, do I punch this asshole? My grandmother replied, (laughs) yeah, punch him. And then my grandfather in his sleep turned and punched her. (laughs) No. Oh, poor grandma. I mean, poor grandma, but also she asked for it. Yeah. This is why. Okay. This is. I I was. I I don't wake people up when Uh they sleep. Like it's not my thing. When I was I was trying when I was a kid, you're not supposed to. Well, I learned when I was a kid. Was certain people for sure. When I was a kid, my dad used to wake up swinging, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> so I vividly remember being like a very small kid, being like, "Hey, I want some water." Like you know, coming with my little sippy cup, wanting some water. Uh-huh. My mom tells story like my dad almost like knocked me out. Cold. Like it yeah. just missed my nose. Like I remember. <laughs> I can I can fit, I can remember the wind across my nose <laughs> and thinking and then oh just running for my life. I was like, and then he's my, like, what? And I'm like, oh yeah, you, you tried to kill us. <laughs> my sister was a sleepwalker growing up, and she a sleepwalker and a sleep talker, and we were all told, don't wake her up. You just have to like lead her back to bed. But mm, she would yeah. just think like she would always think that like the house was falling in or like oh. things like there was like one time where she thought that the bathroom that she was in this contest where you had to cover the bathroom as fast as you could with toilet paper and she was like rushing around the bathroom panicking like trying to get toilet paper everywhere she wasn't actually doing it but in her dream oh she really was. oh that's so funny. but we were always told like don't wake her up you have to just lead her back to bed but this one time now, granted, there was a lot of tequila involved. My ex-husband <laughs> drank a lot of tequila and woke up in the middle of the night and was sleepwalking. And he was trying, he pushed me off the bed and then was trying to shove our mattress out the front door. <laughs> like he got it through our bedroom and was trying what? to push it through our front door. And I was like, 
I don't know how, and he was a big guy, and I was like, yeah. I don't know how to make this man stop. I'm gonna no. lead him back to bed when he's literally carrying it and pushing it out <laughs> the front door. It was the craziest thing, oh, but he, he had no idea what was going on. It was just like a really crazy, like re, I don't know. He was, you know, he had drinking yeah. a lot, and it was a, it was like a wedding that we were at. Oh, it was a, a Gaijin party or a wedding, yeah. and uh, he. Uh, yeah, it was crazy. But he eventually like woke up and realized what he was doing, and then like went back. like. Do you bring the bed, the bed back? back? <laughs> right, yeah. you gotta bring the bed back. I'm so happy my dreams don't have like these elaborate scripts. You know, like right? kind of just like yeah. just me and like talking, or like maybe I'm running somewhere, but I'm obviously, I'm obviously in the bed. I'm still in the bed, but like there's never yeah. like a. And then you do this, and then here's the plot point. And then you have to like it's just like it's just me and whatever's happening in that moment. It's not a lot of like yeah. Not all action in my dreams. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not like an action director in, yeah. your, in, your, in your dreams. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, okay, so this one says, not my current partner, but my ex-boyfriend sometimes talks in his sleep. And the funniest story was this one time I was still up reading a book and I hadn't noticed that he was already asleep next to me. Suddenly he bursts out, will you just give me the fucking yogurt already, Sharon, in a flawless British accent and scares the shit out of me. <laughs> We're both German and none nope. of our first languages include English. We didn't know a Shannon. He That's is lactose like, intolerant. Nope. <laughs> What's that? It's like Sybil, like the lady that had uh, the famous person that had like 25 personalities or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember Sally Fields played her in a movie. Um, I love Sally Fields. But uh, yeah, me too. I mean, uh, all Sally's. Which, uh, right. Yeah, I love all Sally's too. All Sally's. <laughs> um, but. I that, I wonder like are these like 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 this guy talking in a British accent and we've done stories about you know someone a kid all of a sudden like being able to speak another language or yeah. you know or whatever um, I wonder if like there these are all like unlocked personalities that might be inside you know but just you know that's only come out in your untapped. dreams yeah, yeah that's frightening. It is frightening. <laughs> yeah, if all my partner is like, she's like, yeah, t speaking another language. Uh, we, yeah, we, all, we we need to talk about this immediately. I'm waking you up. Like, what? Who? Because yes. my, my first mind is like, you're you're a spy, and your true self is coming out in your sleep. Like something. Yes. Up. Yeah. You know? Yes. Yeah. I'm a, I'm, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. That's your first mm -hmm. thought. You're like, it obviously, is. you're a spy. That gives you a glimpse into who I am. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Jen, you would think something like that. Jen doesn't trust anybody. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. Like, no. Nope. Same. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, I'm sure it's great. Look at that. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah. You've had training. You are a spy. That's my first thought. Yeah. <laughs> Who sent you? Who, Who sent, sent you? you? Exactly. <laughs> what do you exactly. want from me? What did the Russian government want for me? Yeah. Um, okay. My wife was mumbling a lot and suddenly shouted donkey kick as she kicked me in my shin. So that was fun. Oh, <laughs> okay. I don't like the violence. Here's the thing about that one. I It wouldn't surprise me if she wasn't asleep at all. If she was just like, this is oh, I, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like she told him, oh, I was just, I was yeah. just sleep talking. Yeah. And, but she was really oh, like, if you don't take out the garbage one more time. And that's always good that she like kicked him in the shins. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, like when they say that when you're drunk, that that's when it's like truth serum. That's what the things that you say when you're drunk is what you really mean. And that's the truth. Yeah. Maybe it's like, you know, when she's sleeping, she really wanted to kick him. I can like, believe that. There was like some pent up aggression that she just needed to get out. I can believe that. I can believe that. Oh, I'll buy it. And that guy really wanted to call his girlfriend a bitch airflow yeah. bitch <laughs> airflow yeah. bitch he'd been whole he'd been like hanging on to that like yeah. he'd been sweating for years <laughs> in their stuffy apartment <laughs> just like airflow bitch i was sleeping <laughs> yeah what who um Okay, uh, I've been told that as a child, my father would regularly sleepwalk into his dad's bedroom and urinate in his work shoes. Oh, God. Which oh, I, I, ha I had a friend whose roommate did that, would go pee in his closet, like in college. Oh. But I do think that was also alcohol-induced. 
Everybody has a friend who pees on things when they're drunk. Yeah. <laughs> Name that friend. I'm not going to because it's a podcast and it's public, but like we all have a friend that pees on things when they're drunk. I, I, remember, I remember being in college and it didn't happen to me, but it was the, the, the my friend who lived across the hall and it was a big dorm. And so like he went to the restroom and I guess his roommate came back while he was, or not even his, I wasn't even his roommate. Somebody who lived in the hall comes back and we, it was like two o'clock in the morning and we just hear, dude, those are my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy was just like, what? He just peed in, in this dude's room. Oh, no. And, yeah. That was like, I was like, <sighs> I did, that was my first experience. Like, oh, oh, this is like, you can really do stuff when you sleep. Cause he had no yeah. idea any of this was happening. Yeah. 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 I'll never, he's like, dude, those are my shoes. <laughs> I'll never, I'll never forget that. <laughs> Um, I'll just do two more. Um, okay, so this one. Uh, my wife called me a wriggly little enzyme while she was sleeping. <laughs> I've never, ever heard her use that word before. <laughs> that's pretty so funny. that's very endearing. I've never heard those um, words put together before. A wriggly little enzyme? No. Oh, no, I haven't either. <laughs> it's, definitely, it's not a thing. Yeah. That is not like a phrase. But it still hurts. It feels like it hurts. Even though I don't know what it right? means. It feels very disrespectful. Yeah, it does. It does feel disrespectful. Like it feels like it's like a like a some kind of like it's like what's wrong like with a worm or a, yeah what's wrong with an enzyme? I Digestive think, enzymes are like good for you, right? I mean, it depends what kind of enzyme. I, I suppose yes. you don't want to be a wriggly one. You don't want to be a wriggly one. <laughs> <laughs> he started shouting that he couldn't feel his left arm. I pointed out that he was pinching his pillow, not his arm. He then freaked out that he had lost his arm. I pointed out that his arm was under the pillow. He said, okay, and started snoring. It took me another hour to get back to sleep. He didn't wake up at all. Oh, <laughs> oh no. my God. Uh, That's wild. Because, of course, like the person who's like, oh my, you know, is like in it with you, right? Oh, yeah. It's like, no, your arm yeah. is fine. It's okay. Don't worry. And like, they don't even remember, but you have had a traumatic experience. Yeah. And my like Max used to he for a little while, not that long, but he was having like night terrors. And it would be Aww. I mean, it would be like horrifying, right? He because mm. he would be like screaming and crying and like you couldn't wake him up because I tried that once and that was awful. But yeah, it's like he didn't remember anything, but I was like so shooken by it every yeah. time that it'd be so hard to sleep. But yeah, he was just like, Whatever. And then he always yeah. says, like, doesn't believe he doesn't believe it. <laughs> He's yeah. like, No, I didn't. <laughs> I, I oh, like why did you gaslit you into thinking that you had night terrors or like said crazy shit in your sleep? Because you would have no idea. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. No, like, yeah, zero idea. And I, I sleep There's... hard. Like I sleep yeah. very hard. And so, as a, I mean, I've always slept hard. So as a kid, like if my or like sleepovers or my brother or whatever like that, if they could tell me anything. I would, I would just believe them. I was like, I'm sure. Like I'm I, sure I, I did. Yeah. yeah, like I remember. This was like, I think I was in like high school. There was like a minor like tremor in Georgia where like mm. stuff shook. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like stuff shook. And I remember I had like a trophy case above like my bed and a trophy hit me in the head because I knew it because I woke up and the trophy was like by my head and yeah. I had no idea. I slept through all of that. <laughs> like I, so anybody God, can tell me anything. I wish I had I'm, just a little bit of that. Oh yeah, man. You can tell me anything. I'm just going to be like, sure. I got to believe you. I have no idea. <laughs> Yeah, I called you a wriggly little enzyme. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. That yeah, tracks. Okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's get to our top five list. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This week, um, this David actually came up with the idea. I asked him what he wanted to do a top five of, and David, being the sweetheart, wanted to do his top five childhood crushes. I'm so, so excited for this. Yeah, this will be fun. And I don't know. I don't know if everybody did. Did everybody do like celebrities, or did we did like real people that we had crushes on? Oh, oh no, I, so did I did celebrities. Yeah, yeah. Did celebrities. you do real people? Okay. <laughs> uh, there's one real person. Just okay. <laughs> Like Mike what? Caponera Sergeant. from down the street. Right. Celebrities are real people too. Yeah. Anthony Rizzo. No, I didn't. That was my sister. Loved Anthony Rizzo. Um, uh, no. Uh, okay, good. So I think we're. Oh, I have one real person. All the right. Rest I'm excited to okay. hear about him. Okay. Cool. I have like. I have like so, honorable mentions. 
Yeah, let's hear your okay, own that's options. Sally style. Sally loves okay. that shit. <laughs> yeah. I love I love a ten way tie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have so to be clear, I have I have, okay. I have two you start. honorable mentions. With my honorable okay. mentions? Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. give us your honorable mentions and give us your number five. Okay. My two honorable mentions, okay. you brought one up. We brought one up during uh and this you'll you'll see a theme. You brought one up during this episode. One of them is Sally Fields. Hitler? <laughs> oh, Sally Fields? Love Sally Fields. Oh, that's so awesome. You know, I've been watching Winning Time on, yes. uh, you know, now that I'm a huge basketball fan. Yes. Uh, great show. And she's great in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So which yeah. Sally Fields was it? Was it like, yeah. was it, um, was it Smokey and the Bear? Was Smoke, it Sally um, Fields? Was it the, where she was a flying nun? No, yeah. it was like Miss Doubtfire. I was like, <laughs> oh wow, yeah, yeah, was, that's awesome. Yeah, Good to I remember was, that David is younger than us. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's it, awesome. it was Mrs. Doubtfire. But then also, I think she was like, did you just really love like you just were like really attracted to put a, put upon like, moms, nice moms? <laughs> no, like... no, no, I just thought she, I just thought she was. I just always thought she was just really very pretty. And then, I mean, my mom, mom, and then my mom was like, I guess she was, what was the show she was in? In like the, it was like, was it that girl? Uh, it was some, it was, I, I don't it was, remember. It. Yes. But I remember seeing like a young Googling Sally right Fields and being like, everything I said is justified. Like this is, right. I knew it. <laughs> yeah. I knew it's it. not weird that I'm attracted. I'm not weird that I'm a seven year old. Gidget. Yeah. That yeah. I'm a seven year old yes, attracted gidget. to a 40 year old woman. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not weird. No, it's not weird at all. When she was young. Yeah. <laughs> Very cute. But, but okay, now I said to say my next honorable mention, uh, and I, it's not just me either, because on our podcast, more than 10, Damon has also agreed with this one, uh, and it's Susan okay. Sarandon. We are both. Oh, she's gorgeous. Right. Yeah, everybody yeah. loves Susan Sarandon, especially <laughs> every man loves Susan Sarandon in that baseball movie. What's it called? Oh, oh uh, Bull, Durham. Bull Durham. Bull Durham. Bull Durham. Yeah. 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 But I don't remember that. What about that was in like Thelma and Louise? Yeah. I yeah, just saw her she was all the time. Yeah. I saw her at yeah. somebody's Byron Bowers comedy special taping. She was just in the at the taping. And she oh, walked really? in. This was like a couple years ago. And was I started. Was it in New York? No, or it was in, in Atlanta. Here? Yeah, it was here in Atlanta. She was just in a movie recently and she looked amazing in it. Oh, yeah. I don't she know what movie it was. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, I had a moment. <laughs> I had a real moment. And I was nowhere near yeah. her, but I saw her, and I was like, oh, my God, this is so random. Like, I, I had a moment. I had a she moment. She was in Blue Beetle, and she looked, oh, like, yeah. she looked like she aged backwards 20 years. Like, yeah. she looked incredible. Yeah. Yeah, no, she, she's great. She looks great. Yeah. All right. So I'll do my, you want me to do my number five? Yeah. Yeah, then do All your right. number five. This is, this is a fictional character. It's, it's a real person with a fictional character. Uh-huh. Uh, Win- Winnie Cooper from The Wonder Years. Oh, yeah. that's a cute one. I feel like that's... every guy loved her. Yeah. Yeah, I was a, I was a big, I was a big Winnie Cooper fan. Okay. I mean, who was not? Like, she was, she was just the sweetest, hottest, yes. and it was like she liked nerdy boys, right? Yeah. She was like a full grown. I mean, she looked like a woman. She wasn't. She was a child, but she looked right. like a woman, and she liked. Uh, what's his name? Savage. Kevin Arnold. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin Arnold. Arnold. Kevin Arnold. Yeah, uh-huh. looked like a five year old. You know, he looked <laughs> yeah, like a little yeah. kid. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Um. Cool. Okay, so my number five. Um, I have mentioned these before because they really didn't age well. This is like these two are very problematic now, but my little heart loved them. And I, I will not apologize for that. And this okay. is Kirk Cameron and Ricky Schroeder, who oh, are yeah. uh, real right wing nut yeah, jobs yeah, yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, what happened? But in their oh. teen beat years, they could get it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Really. Kirk Cameron. Yeah. He was, yeah. That's a solid. My, uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, everybody loved him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh. My number five was um, Atreyu from Neverending Story. I okay. loved. Okay, let him. me ask you this. Even though he was very feminine looking. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say. I remember yeah. that the rumor was that the actor was actually a girl. Is that really? true? Because I oh. also had a crush, but then I remember like that the rumor was that that was, um, or maybe that's just a rumor. See, 
Um, Betray you. It was yeah, paged by actor. Let's see. And I say rumor. I, where did I hear this from? Like Noah what, where was... Hathaway. No. Okay. 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 <laughs> I think it's it is a boy. Yeah, it okay. is because there's pictures of him grown up. But yeah. and it doesn't look that. Good. Uh, <laughs> Look, but, uh, a moment in time. We're only talking about the moment it, yeah. in time where they. No way is now a realtor somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He also stopped rumors... acting. Okay, go ahead. It, and then he returned in 1994 and did a movie called "To Die to Sleep," and then he just never did another thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I love night. I love rumors because you don't really get rumors. Aren't they? Don't last as long these days, People right? Just yeah, it and it's over. So yeah, rumor, remember the kid from the cereal, Mikey. Uh uh-huh. Mikey, the cereal. He, he died yeah. by eating pop rocks and soda. Yeah. yeah. Wait, no, that Not was really. a rumor. That was one of the rumors. Know. I yeah. <laughs> Do you like yeah. that? I was like, really, you guys? Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm like the last generation that get like real rumors. Yeah. 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 It's so true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, um, um, one time on Dumb Love, we I think we asked people, or we maybe it was even this podcast, people to send in their craziest high school rumor about that everybody just accepted. <laughs> and they were, I mean, it was like, you know, some of them were just, they were all like, uh, some guy had sex with a goat and yeah. <laughs> Ours was that someone had sex with a dolphin. That was at my high school. And we just were like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, God. I, Big I, open I, sex guy. I had a rumor about me. I tried to do it as a bit on stage. I'm trying to remember the name of the movie. I had a friend of mine, a good friend of mine. One day he calls me and he was just like, hey, are you okay? And we're, this is after college. He's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. And he's like, I just heard this news about you. I just want to check on you. I was like, what's up? And he goes, very sincerely, he goes, we heard you, you live in a Walmart. <laughs> and I was like, what? He's like, yeah, you live in a Walmart? And I was like, you, you're my friend. Like, <laughs> like what? who started this? In, like, that's the, that's the plot of that, like, Natalie Portman movie. Like, what do you <laughs> Like, you think I'm living out a Natalie Portman movie? Like, and he was, he was like, no, we just heard. And I was like, oh, my God. Who hates you? Who hates you? And who who, hates what you? a, like, very specific. So specific. Rumor. Like, what was the origin of that? I, gotta I don't know. I, gotta I don't know, know. When, but I was, I was hated upon. When I moved from Long Island to New York um, as a teenager, um, the rumor spread that we had like won the lottery and became rich and moved to Georgia because Um, on Long Island, everything was so expensive and um, houses were much smaller. Taxes are insane, even like Mm -hmm. back then in the nineties. So we went from living in like a modest house to like a, a, an Atlanta suburb like we all had our, we went from sharing yeah. bedrooms to like we all had our own yeah. bedroom and it looked like a mansion. It wasn't really, but it looked yeah, yeah, yeah. to right. them. Everybody was like, oh yeah, the the O'Neills, they like got rich and they live in a mansion now in, in Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> it was like our and our house in Georgia was half the price of what our house was on Long Island. Of course, it was crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we paid Jeez. I remember we paid a hundred and fifty thousand dollars for that house in ninety four. And it was like a giant like five six bedroom house it was crazy Ooh. do your parents okay. still times there? are different no Mm-mm. oh they too bad sense. yeah i know that's sitting on a gold mine yeah. <laughs> yeah right yeah i was thinking the same yeah. thing sally <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like uh that property so right? that's really valued <laughs> i know it's insane okay uh, uh, what's your next one david okay this one i'm 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 kind of breaking the rules but this is my olympic i have I had olympic okay. crushes i think i run the oh. same olympics uh, okay. it was Dominique Dawes and Christy oh, yes. Yamaguchi. Christy yeah. Yamaguchi and Dominique Dawes. My my dad tells a story. I think I was like five with Christy Yamaguchi, and he just was like, he just, what did he say? He was like, you just stop playing and like walk to the TV <laughs> and then just stare. And he goes, uh. he tells us, he was like, yeah, he was like, when you did that, I go, that's my boy. Like I made him proud because <laughs> I just stopped playing to like watch Christy Yamaguchi skate, and I was just like, this is it. Hey, yeah, Christy, I'm with you, Dominique Dawes. I used to love the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Every year I had an Olympic crush for sure, but those two, 
those two were mine. Without they started it all. They started yeah. it all. They kicked it off. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I remember like having a crush on, I mean, this was actually, I was definitely an adult when he was in the Olympics and maybe he still is, is uh, Apollo Ono. Oh yeah, he was the the speed skater. Speed skater, yeah. So had that like, long just hair, just so fast. Yeah, Very and I remember tan. he like at one time was like um at what they like caught him on tape like afterwards like mouthing up to his wife like I love you and it was oh, like wow. the sweetest thing ever and I was like, oh, and can you imagine? <laughs> he had this. Did he have the soul patch? He did have the soul patch, Which yeah. Which is like, everybody can't get away with the soul patch. He had a soul patch. I mean, he's also like five foot. <laughs> oh, is he? Like, you know, so, yeah, they're all tiny. Uh, that makes sense. I don't know why I assumed he was bigger. Yeah, no. Yeah, five foot makes a lot of sense. Tiny. Yeah, Paul, mm-hmm. yeah, I remember him. <laughs> um, okay, my number four was from 90210, and it was Brian Austin Green. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think it was because, like... Luke Perry and what's the other guy? Jason name? Priestley. Jason Priestley both seemed like old. I mean, they were older than me, but they also seemed older. And I was like, oh, I don't like, I don't like you. that. Yeah. I also like always, my crushes were like for guys that I felt like were attainable. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're talking about like um, new kids on the block. It's like, I like the bad boys. So I was a Donnie. And, uh, but it's like anybody who liked Danny, it was like, just because they thought they might have a chance. Right. In their life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Danny love Sorry, Danny. Life. Yeah. 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 It's like, you know, you can, you can believe in any, you can try for anything. It doesn't, right. it doesn't limit yourself here with this crush. <laughs> Um, my number four is Christian Slater from Gleaming the Cube. We actually talked about this recently, but okay. that was where I fell in love with him. And then I felt fo- I followed him for forever. Um, Christian, yeah. Christian Slater. Mm-hmm. That's just, these, are, these, are, these are solid picks. Yeah. These are very solid okay. picks. Okay. What's your is number it... three? Oh, okay. My number three is uh, Kyla Pratt. Kyla Who's Pratt. That? Googling. From... So, all right. She was... Um, she Ooh, she's called, really pretty. She played on a show called One on One. She was a little girl. She was in like a Pepsi commercials and like these Nike commercials. She was in she was everything. Like the same age. Yeah, she was in everything. Yeah. Kyla Pratt. Oh yeah, she's so cute. What's the Proud Family? She was Penny. She's Penny Proud on the Proud Family. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I met her last year, and I you lost. did. Yeah, I was at the. Um, <laughs> The, what was it? NAACP Image Awards. I was with Dulce Sloan. She invited me to come out there. And we're oh, in this wow. section. Yeah. And I see Kyla Pratt with her mom. And then I guess her people, somebody knew Dulce. So we were kind of in the same section the whole night. And like Neo yeah. was playing. And then me and her like danced to Neo. And I was like making people like, we were making fun of other people not dancing. And she was laughing. Yeah. In my mind, I was just like, this is the greatest night of your life. Oh my God, you're making like her your laugh. Like your childhood yeah. crush is <gasps> ca- like giggling at your little silly jokes and y'all are dancing to Neo. Get out of it. And then she was very sweet and we took a picture together. But uh, yeah, I that was like my, oh my God. Yeah. That's oh, amazing. I love that for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's Neo up to these days? Um, <laughs> you know. I guess performing at the NAACP Awards. I don't think he has to do. He wrote so many songs. Like he wrote songs for Beyonce. He doesn't have he's to do rich anything forever. Ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah rich I was forever. Say. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good good I want to be rich know. forever. Yeah. <laughs> What's oh, yours? Okay, my number three is Tevin Campbell. Ooh. Do you guys remember oh, yeah. Tevin Campbell? Everybody yes. Has, yeah. What's he doing I mean, these days? Hmm. I looked him up not he's that 47. long ago. Yeah. yeah, he's Dance. older than me, so I have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when he was on Fresh Prince? So, oh, yes. Oh, yes. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I was Ashley. like, <gasps> yes. Like, yeah. I was like, oh, my God. Tevin he Campbell, saw- round and round. Like, <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I loved him so much. He was so cute. He had that, like, high box. Oh, so yes. cute. Tevin Campbell. Very. <laughs> was he also, did he, he voiced the... um. The dude who did the Goofy movie song, he did this. The, oh, uh, did he? Oh, yeah, yeah he I'm, did. Uh huh. Yeah, because it's I. I just pulled him up. If yeah, we listen to yeah that one. Yeah, and Hard he was thing. in Graffiti Bridge. Oh yeah, he had a, he had a time. I yeah, don't think I realized that. Oh wow, yeah. he's uh um, not 
not doing it for me as an adult, but as a kid. He was... <laughs> yeah, well, um, he's. I think he's, I'm pretty sure he's gay now, so he's not. Oh. So I'm not doing it for him either. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's like right back at you. <laughs> yeah. You know what, Sally? I thought we were gonna have a thing, but <laughs> you got old too. <laughs> yeah, you, you called me the wrong time in my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. That's funny. Um, my number three is um, very specifically from the growing pains, Leonardo Ooh. DiCaprio. When he was, yes. when he was like the kid that they like the cousin? brought Tuck in. Wow. Oh, you're right. He wasn't a cousin. Yeah, they he like, wasn't. He was like a wayward child that yeah. was like, that they brought into their family and took under their wing. And he was, he had that like, you know, blonde butt cut thing going on. I, I had a poster. I love that. Yeah. I, <laughs> he would have a very, poster. Yeah. He yes. was so cute then. He was very I, cute. I mm-hmm. remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Is what's your number turn? two? Okay. Yeah. So you brought up Tevin Campbell from Fresh Prince. Now, I'm pretty sure what I'm about to say is cheating, but I'm going to say it anyway. And it's every <laughs> it's every one of the Fresh Prince's girlfriends. He, oh, yeah. I every, mean. every one. He didn't miss. He didn't That's miss. That's like saying any... any- like Woody, um, Woody Allen uh, co-star that like any because he always had the most beautiful women or any right. um, you know Adam Sandler co-star or any yes. like every man writes themselves in w- into these roles with these like amazingly gorgeous yeah. women and there were yeah. I mean that was like a time when like yeah every like young black starlet. Oh my god! That was like either they yeah. got their start there or they went through that like Fresh Prince. Naomi like... Campbell. <laughs> oh Leave my god! There, uh, there's... Go ahead, go ahead. Oh yeah, there's a ranking on Ranker. There is a list of ranking of all Will Smith's girlfriends on Fresh Prince, and Let's number one yeah. is Nia Long. Of course, yeah, Nia um, Nia yeah. Long is Tyra Banks. Yep. yep. Lila Roshan. Okay, I don't remember her. Elise Neal. Elise Neal, gorgeous. Garcelle Bouvet. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Gorgeous. <laughs> oh my God, she's <laughs> I mean. so beautiful in that. She's a housewife I mean, now. Pam Greer well, on the show. He was like a place girl. Pam Greer. Like, was this Vanessa like older? Williams. Yeah. Yep. Vivica Let's Fox. See, did he? Mia Mara. Queen Latifah. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Naomi Campbell. Jasmine Guy. Vivica Jasmine A. Fox. Guy. Yeah. Stacey Dash before played she two got different crazy. different people on the show. Did she? she? Played, That's funny. <laughs> she played, yeah, she played like Will's girlfriend and he was like kind of, he was like ashamed of her because she was like not like the other girls or whatever, but yeah. she was super cool. Oh. And then later she played, or maybe before or later, she played like Hillary's boss, like this music executive. Oh. And we just didn't say anything about it. It works for us. <laughs> I mean, nobody was like, hey, A, that's Queen Latifah. And yeah. she, like, at the time had, like, one of the biggest hits ever. Absolutely. And B, we've seen her before on the show. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. were just like, we got to get her back. We got yeah. to get Queen Latifah back. But yeah, all Robin these Givens, <laughs> Tisha Campbell, yep. Pam Greer. Yep. That's crazy. I mean, that is a ba- wow. bananas lineup of women. Yeah. Holy moly. I know. Like, yeah. not just, like, beautiful women, but, like, good actresses and, like, award yeah. <laughs> like, starlets. Like, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, no, he, holy. he did, yeah. But Nia Long is probably, I mean, that's 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 the one he married on the show. She was she stayed yeah. around the longest. Yeah. That was the first um, uh, Pete Davidson effect. Not to say Will Smith is a very handsome man. He is not anything compared. But it's like you automatically become famous and sought after if you are his girlfriend. You're the new oh, yeah. girl. So maybe oh. like it's like yeah, this was the first. It's like everybody that played his girlfriend be- became the next it girl. Super, yeah, super famous. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was the queen maker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that all of those women would really love that. That is what we're attributing their success yeah, yeah. to. I know. Yeah, right. <laughs> like Vanessa He's Williams just like, didn't have talent. Right. She you was know what already, I mean? Like, yeah. oh no, no, she's just his girlfriend. <laughs> Yeah. It's like I just I just uh, love empowering women, you know. Uh, <laughs> okay. What's okay, your so, number two? Uh my number two is uh Zach Morris. Oh, oh okay. I mean, yeah. Specifically. But you know, I mean Mar- yeah, yeah, Martin yeah. Paul Gossler, but like yes, Zach Morris. He yeah. was the cutest, funniest, most adorable. And yeah. I loved he him had so Riz. much. I'll say that. He um, aged, my aged two, very well. 
Yeah, he's aged well. Yeah. He's still like a good actor, you know? I feel like yeah. this is making up for my Kirk Cameron. <laughs> and I think he's still real cool. Yeah, he's cool, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's a good he's dude. Still- yeah. yeah. Um, my um, number two is, and I know this is a weird one, but uh, it, it's the the Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have a poster in my room. It was a huge <laughs> Terminator poster. I, I, I like convinced the guy at the movie store to let me have it. It was a Terminator 2 poster, but I just, I don't know. I had a thing for the Terminator. I loved I him. Mean, and I loved Eddie Furlong in the Terminator. So that's my all, my honorable mention was Edward Furlong in T2. Okay. And also the Terminator. <laughs> T2. Okay. <laughs> okay. Terminator. I like that one. I like that one. Okay. <laughs> is it is it my is it me finally? Yeah, let's see. Yeah. Number one. My, my number, number one number one is uh Chili from TLC. Oh, of oh. course. Wait, who is I just saw she's dating someone. Uh who is she? she dating now? And it's like it's a kind of an um it's interesting. Wait, oh, Matthew I think... Lawrence. Her and Matthew yes. Lawrence, like yes. yeah, they're married, I think. Yeah. Not yeah, good. isn't that crazy? That is kind of wild. Or no, I that's did... her boyfriend. Okay. Yeah. Either way, big Chili fan. Uh, yeah. I, I, I remember, I saw oh. like Christian. Okay, oh, what would you say? No, I just, I had to look up who that was, and then I'm like, that is so random. Yeah, that's it's Joey so Lawrence's younger brother. Yeah. Yeah. 90s Although babies. He's 44 yeah. now. Weird. Yeah. She, she's looked the same forever. But yeah. I I vividly remember the video No Scrubs. This is such a random memory. Mm. The video No uh-huh. Scrubs came out, I think I was in seventh or eighth grade, and I was going to a very conservative Christian school. We were going on a field trip, and it was like an overnight field trip. We were in a hotel, and me and this other kid got in trouble because we we were we were sneaking and watching TLC's No Scrubs video, <laughs> being like, oh, my God. <laughs> and the teacher came in and was like, we all doing it here watching TV, and we were just like, "I'll take the loss, whatever." I'm watching, shit. like, <laughs> yeah, worth do, it. Do yeah. your worst, do your worst. Yeah, like this is, we're this is the greatest. This is amazing. <laughs> I think this song had just dropped. Yeah, oh, written by Candy so Burris, also a housewife. Also written by Candy Burris. Singing. Yeah, yeah. She she is uh yeah. It Chili all comes is back to the housewives. <laughs> of course it does. Yes, it does. Yeah, I mean, yeah, all of the. TLC was amazing. They were oh. like, I, I loved. I mean, yeah, as, they were as a young as a young woman at the time, I was just like, they're so cool. Yeah, <laughs> these women are so funny and sexy and great and all of the things. I was, they I was a big TLC. crazy, sexy and cool. They were crazy, yeah. sexy yes. and cool. Um, and cool. I love that. Okay, my number one is uh, should be no surprise. It is Joey McIntyre from oh, New right. Kids on the Block. Yeah, okay. I okay. liked him because he was Joey. the youngest. Uh-huh. I was a Joey. <laughs> yes. I had the Hanging Tough video, and I used to watch it and dance along with them. Hanging Tough, yeah, the yes. whole Please concert go, video. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. please don't go, girl. No, way. yeah, I went to the mixtape tour. Uh, with no, my right. friend Sam because we thought it would be hilarious, but it ended up being amazing. And actually, um, uh, Salt and Pepper was there. It was like Ooh, nice. It ended up being New Kids, Salt and Pepper, um, uh, Debbie Gibson, Tiffany, um, oh, wow. and uh, Naughty by Nature. It was Ooh. amazing. It yeah. was the, like we had the yeah. a fucking blast, and we thought that it would be fu- like. But they all they were all in amazing shape and like totally brought everything yeah. like right. a thousand percent. But there was a moment where Debbie Gibson and Joey McIntyre sang Lost in Your Eyes together <gasps> and everyone died. <laughs> Still recovering. Still <laughs> like third hand dying over here. <laughs> I know. I can't even believe it. It was uh, so fun. Yeah, um, nobody does okay, my, anymore. Nobody huh? has choreography. Like you remember, like l- trying to learn choreography to a like a song. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Dance. Nobody has that anymore. There's no. Choreography. I think the last time, yeah, the last like routine we all learned was like "Bye Bye Bye" from NSYNC, and then it just we everyone quit. Yeah. Well, I mean, now else. there's like 10 second TikToks, and so that everybody yeah. does TikToks. their dance yeah. routines. That's true. There. Yeah. I remember waking up in college, and my roommate was practicing New Edition's um, uh, "If If It Isn't Love." 
So he's like, oh. he's doing and I was like, what are you doing? He's just like, he's like doing them. And I was just like, we're best friends now. But I remember at that point, I was like, this, this is a questionable, this is questionable. Right? <laughs> like, uh-huh. What is happening? Yeah. You wake up to that? Like, okay. I woke up to that. And, but then eventually I was like also trying to do it. Like I was trying to be another member in it. Like, right. Yeah. I was like, it's very, very, uh, yeah, get you going. So, yeah. Um, my number one is actually a real person because he was my crush throughout all of elementary school, kindergarten, all of elementary school till I moved to Georgia and his name was Kevin Kirk. And we were friends. We were friends because we were all friends. We all grew up in the same like neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but then on, I remember on our seventh grade trip, field trip to Washington, D.C., he asked me to be his girlfriend Ooh. and I said yes and I was uh-huh. so excited and then I was in my hotel room with my other roommates and I got a call and I answered it and they said oh yeah you think you're going out with Kevin Kirk better get with the mojo program or whatever they said some what? like mojo phone call like they pranked me it was a fucking <gasps> prank oh. it's like a, an 80s movie oh. yeah. and then did Wait, they he pour blood over it? your head yeah he was in on it oh <gasps> Yeah. Oh. And I hate so, him. Yeah. And Is then like him pro now? No, we don't like him anymore. No. And then yeah, and then I remember when I came back to visit one time in New York, he was like trying to be nice to me and stuff. Nah, too like, late, bro. Fuck you, Kevin too, Kirk. Too, too late, bro. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Even though he still made number one on the list, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, just because he was the most notable on my list. Gotcha. Yeah. I will say, I, 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 a few years ago, I hope everything's okay. I do wish him, I don't wish him any harm. I think he, like, he had some kind of an illness, and I did donate to his GoFundMe because okay. I'm a better person. There we go. He was in the seventh <laughs> grade. <laughs> you win. Man. You didn't you donate win. and then call yeah. him up and be like, "Psych, I, Mojo." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope he's. I hope him and his family are well. But refresh the GoFundMe. Yeah. My name. That was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Jen. Uh, that's yeah, heartbreaking. That was my. Like, I just feel like that's like the most quintessential uh, childhood crush story, though, right? Oh, yeah, sure. that's like yeah. very. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that feels very i mean yeah i had a um my first kiss i think i've told definitely told the story before but my first kiss his name was kevin gears and fuck kevin's at, man right it was at kevin's. summer camp no more kevin's when i was like 12 maybe okay. and then like four years later um i was working at that summer camp as a camp counselor and i overheard this girl who was in my cabin and she was like 11 or 12 and she was talking about her boyfriend kevin gears and i was like um do you mean kevin gears from whatever hometown and she was like yeah i was like isn't he 16 and she was like yeah but he thinks i'm 14 and i was like oh my god no (laughs) oh my god oh no not good (sighs) not great anyway i hope yeah i um you know i wish him all the best (laughs) Yeah, we're wishing, we're wishing all these we people wish, the best. <laughs> we wish them all the best and we move on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're wishing the best we can. That's what. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Well, you guys, thank you so much, um, David, for being here. It thank was such me. a pleasure. I know. I loved having you on the show. No, yeah. A lot of fun. You, can you tell me. everybody where they can find you on the internet? Absolutely. Um, on Instagram, I'm do or dies at D-U-E-O-R-D-I-E. Uh, I think I have a website, davidpurduecomedy.com, but I would say don't check it because it's not updated. But it is exists. I was going to say, I <laughs> looked for it and did not see anything. So. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> breaking news. If it's there, it's, there, it's hard anymore. to find. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then also Twitter is do or die as well. Yeah. Yeah. And follow David. He posts clips and you'll find out where he's going to be. And um, and um, listen to 4th and 10, his podcast. Listen to um, his radio show with Mark Kendall. Yeah. What's Good Atlanta. Um, it's also, I looked, it is, it is also just so you know, it's also a podcast, so a podcast and you can listen to it live. Yeah. <laughs> David, yeah, there you go. They didn't um, know that. They didn't tell me. That. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> and you weren't curious at all. At all. No, There's I no other way to find out. That. No. 
nope. can't, so can't know or world. promote it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> what if they're like mailing paychecks to you and you don't even know what address they have and you're like, hmm? Mm-hmm. I'll be honest, I don't even know. If none I get... of that was surprised. I've had that happen to me a time before <laughs> where I've forgotten to get checks. And they're like, we yeah. literally, I'm getting a check from a, some organization I did a bit for a year ago. And they were asking me to do it again. I was like, I don't think y'all pay me. And they're like, oh my God, we didn't. <laughs> and I, yeah. Oh my God. I'm not good. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm broken. <laughs> yeah. Uh, perfect. Uh, okay. Well, you can find us. You can find us at The Ridiculous Pod at. Uh, on Instagram, you can find us at the Ridiculous Podcast. Um, on TikTok, you could rate and review. You could tell a friend. We would love that. Yes, we would love that. Thank you, David, so much for doing the show. Such a blast. Thank you for having um, me. And thank you guys for listening. And we'll see you next week on the Ridiculous. Ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous.